Okay, so now that we have the basic battle flow in place, let's start adding some animations to the skills. So first, picking up right where we left off, go to a folder where you've drawn your images, and we'll take this one and put it here. So just drag and drop it right into the asset area. And just as before, you take that and you drag it over into the hierarchy. That creates an object with a sprite renderer with that sprite. want it to be on top of everything else, so let's put it order in layer 3. What we're going to do is we're going to summon this when we do attack number 1, skill number 1 and then so it's going to appear briefly and then disappear so what we're going to do is we're going to add a script so you're going to click on the object you're going to click on add component you're going to do a new script and the script's going to be self destruct we want it to be c sharp And it's really your preference, but I like to do any kind of housekeeping to an object attached to the object itself. If possible, it's not always possible. So now we've got three scripts. And we want this one to kick off as soon as it starts. So what we can do is we just do destroy game object. So pretty self-explanatory. The command is saying to destroy. What are you destroying? Destroying the game object and you can put in a delay let's do a delay of one so one second now what we're going to do is we're going to take this drag it back into our assets and now it's a prefab so now we can delete the original object now what we have to do is we have to call on that prefab. And it's important to, to make sure you remember if you're looking at the just the image itself or the actual prefab. So now let's click on GM. And what you're going to see is when we modify the code, you're going to see a new variable appear here. Let's go ahead and go to battle flow. And we're going to up here add the new variable. So public. And this time it's a game object variable. Just call it slash object. When we do that, as I said shows up over here, so make sure you're grabbing the prefab, drag, drag and drop it there. So now GM is aware of that prefab. So now we need to call on that prefab, so we'll put it here for skill 1. So we've added the object, we instantiate the object, and then on the object itself we already put a self-destruct script, so this should work. So let's run it, we'll click number one, and sure enough, it works. Now. 
just need to tweak this a little bit. So it's, it needs to go a little bit higher up on the screen. So let's make this 0.5f. And remember, when you use fractions, you have to add that letter F there. That's just the way it works. It keeps the code from getting confused. And then we want to go back to this. And this stays on the screen a little bit too long, so let's do 0.5f and see how that looks. Again, I'm going to hit the number one key. Not bad. We'll tweak it a little bit more and then we'll be done. Okay, so another staple of RPGs is during the battle the enemy tends to flash when you hit it. So let's add that now. So what we have to do is we have to make the GM object aware of the enemy. So let's go into battle flow. We'll add a new variable. It will also be a game object. And we'll just call it enemy save it, and you'll see it appear over here. Now because we're actually referring to an enemy that's already in the scene and not a prefab, we have to take it from here this time. And now because we've assigned a variable, we can now make changes to that. So what we're going to do is we're going to change its color. So let's do that during the neither stage. So that's this right here. So we said it's called enemy. And we're going to use get component again. And it's the sprite renderer. and it's going to be a new color and it ranges from 0 to 1 so basically like a percent so we want it to be red that should make it flash red now what we're going to have to do is we're going to actually make another change to the basic flow. We're going to have to add a fourth stage. So there's there's hero, neither, and enemy. But we're going to have to add a processing stage. So uh, let's change this to effects delay. Now what we have to do, there's one more line of code here, but we can't put it yet until we make the code routine that it's going to refer out to. So this is where the actual delay comes in. And you can name it whatever you want. Call it flash delay. You can put a variable in here between these parentheses if you want this to calculate a variable. We don't. We just want a straight up delay. And the syntax for that and then this is how many seconds you want to wait. Again, since it's a decimal, go put that letter F under it. So you're saying, okay, wait for half a second, now do something. So to save a little typing, we're going to grab this, copy it, and what we're saying is now go back to its normal color. 
and then we need to come out of this new stage and then go to enemy. Because if we didn't do that, this would keep it being true and would keep processing this, processing this over and over and over again. So we actually have to change this variable. We have to make it a new, vari uh, new value so it doesn't keep repeating this. So basically we've created a fourth state now. And I, I copied it but I didn't fix it. This needs to be enemy. Okay, so I even said I had to do this and then didn't do it. So I got confused for a second because I'm like, well, it's turning red. This is what changes it back. So I simply didn't tell it to uh, come out here to the delay. So as you can see, this matches this. It's not a coincidence. So what I'm doing is I'm changing the color, setting this variable to the new state, go out to the flash delay, so it comes down here, waits half a second, changes the color back to normal, changes the state back to enemy, and now it should continue to run as it normally did. So you can tweak it a little bit as far as the actual duration, 